All right, so what we're gonna do on the day, I got a silver block here. Um, it has the uh, Thunderbolt lighting energizer ignition system. And what I'm gonna be doing is converting it to the uh, newer brakeless uh, Thunderbolt ignition, which is more prevalent in the early 70s uh, into 78, right before the advent of the ADI ignition in 79. So I'm just gonna go through step by step, take this apart. I'm sure there's gonna be some modifications I'm gonna have to make. I know it's going to need a new rectifier, flywheel might need to be replaced, the internal harness definitely, the whole thing is going to get switched out, and then of course the, uh, the upgraded switch box with the new face plate, and uh, I don't know, we're going to see if it works. Alright, so the first thing I want to do is uh, remove the, uh, the cowling, so I'm going to go ahead and get that done, it's just these, uh, they're like size 13 metric, one, two, and you got four, four back here, just to take off the, uh, the top part. And then these two are connected down here. These bolts are kind of, I don't even know if you can see them, a little, a little tougher to reach. Yeah, right there. There's two of them in the front, and that's going to pop this whole thing off. And then uh, I'll be able to disconnect all the wires and then uh, basically start ripping stuff out. Okay, so in the next step, we're going to be removing the, uh, the energizer distributor right here. You just got to unscrew this. And there's a one, two, and a bolt back there, three. And that's just going to pop down. We have to disconnect it here, and then of course get the plug wires out. So we're going to pull that, pull that out. And one of the major, major differences I've seen between the uh, Energizer version and the Brakeless version is that it has a thicker, uh, a thicker mount up here. So the actual pin had to be created higher, which could potentially hit this uh, flywheel. So I'm going to have to figure out a solution for that. Other than that, it should just be a plug and play. But I don't know. We're going to see. All right. All right, so we're looking at here is the uh, the brakeless distributor and the energizer distributor. As you can see, the rotor shaft that connects to the to the belt up here at the top, the, the fly this thing right here, is longer. And when they uh, designed this model, they made this bracket right here three eighths of an inch wider. So I'm going to have to modify the cap and try to drop it down. Now these screws here are the exact same size. The only difference is that. Like I said, the shaft is taller, so we're going to get that modified and get that back in there. But oh, so far, so good. All we have left is the carburetors. Uh, we'll go ahead and just take out all the wiring and everything else now. Man, look at that mess. Alright, so we got quite a mess uh, going on here. Alright, so we got all the wires out. I did test the coil and did pass the uh, resistance test, uh, both on the high end and on the leads. Um, got the new solenoid. New solenoid already installed, let's go ahead and change it out. Um, the old harness is out, which I really, I really don't like this harness. I'll go over more on why later. Uh, well, not because it's ugly, but because of the uh, design, the engineering behind it. So. Everything out, starter's good, coil's good, solenoid is good, carbs are good. And it's gonna be replaced with an internal wiring harness that I made. Okay. Well, not made, but this is from uh, an 850, I believe a 1974. Now I went ahead and rewired it to the new color codes, so everything should line up with the new commander controllers over there. <laughs> should line up. So we're going to see if it works. I'm going to go ahead and plug this puppy in and uh, we're going to get everything rewired and then install the distributor, the uh, faceplate, switch box, belt, try to get all the timing done. And uh, we're going to feed it some gas. Let's see what happens. Alright, so now we're going to install the, uh, the internal harness that I, uh, I guess, rebuilt, as you could say. And again, all the color codes match the current color codes for the new style, new style controller. Uh, first thing I'm going to do before I put this through here, I'm actually going to install the components onto the solenoid. It's a lot easier to install when the wires are out. And then I already got the, uh, let's see, the uh, rectifier installed. I have the jump, red jumper to here. And then the red wire from the harness is going to go to there as well. This comes off the stators. These are alternating wires right here. And these are going to get clamped together once it comes down. And uh, once I get done that, she should be wired up. And then it'll be time to... Uh, Put on the distributor. I'm gonna have to cut that little piece off right here. 
that's just your your choke mechanism i'm just going to saw that off that way the, the, the plate can fit because the uh, the box is a lot bigger than what the other one was so all right well we're almost there so i'm going to get this fired up and uh, we'll clip back in all right so now i got the uh new internal harness installed everything bolted on solenoids hooked up starters hooked up now I'm just going to put on the uh, face plate and then connect, uh, connect all these wires here and then finally the distributor. Alright, so now I have the face plate installed, all the wires hooked up. That's from the coil, that's for the tack, which might end up changing to being on the uh, rectifier. Uh, this is the 12 volt, it's also attached to the uh, rectifier, I don't know if you can see that. This one goes back to the controls, into the battery, and then this is your run switch, the purple wire, right here on the white, traditionally white, and then of course the switch box is grounded here at the bottom by that screw. You can see it right there. Yeah, and the rectifier barely fit. Let me see if I can get on the other side. All right, there we go, that's a better view of it. Yeah, the rectifier barely fit, but everything's in there. Now it's got to hook the distributor up and connect these, do a little bit of modification here, and uh, we should be able to feed the gas. Alright, so now the distributor is almost installed. Got the cap on. I don't know if you can see that or not because of the sun. But there's an arrow on top of here. The center, the arrow, and the two dots on the flywheel, they all have to line up. And then these nipples have to line up. And right now I have them all, let's see, all lined up. I'm not sure if you can see that. Okay, so I finally got the distributor in. Basically inverted the cap, actually had to smash it down. The clearance is there, it looks like it's just a little off, but nothing that's gonna cause any problems. Suck a washer in there, just to give it a little more gap. Remember, this is three eighths differential from the rotor shaft, so I had to make up for that. So this is tight up here. Of course, the distributor wire is black, black, white, uh, brown. There's a kill switch that's hooked up. Uh, I'm gonna ground the distributor to the front and on the back here. I got all the plug wires routed correctly. Coil is hooked up. All the numbers match. <laughs> and the new wires are in, so I'm gonna put the top cowling on. We're gonna feed it some gas. All right, so the top cowling is on. Looks like it was a pretty good fit. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a talk, see what happens. All right, got the water running. Did one last final check of all the wires just to make sure everything was correct. pump of water but she does run let me see what's going on here to why I don't like the uh, the energizer harness as you can see here E is connected to G and you have the, you know your yellow black gray Sam and all that stuff and then all the way over here you have brown that appears out of nowhere now this is your your tack signal okay and it's connected to the kill switch and there's a module you can get that that's supposed to make it work or whatever but you know just those two wires connected and then the brown appearing out of here you know, it just seems like a poor design. Um, probably very good back in those days, late 60s. So this is the ignition system that we went to. And as you can see, there is an independent brown wire and goes up to the switch box for independent tack reading, which 
actually did that on this model, it doesn't work. So I'm going to hook that tack button up to the uh, alternating side, yellow side of the alternator. And then that should work. But yeah, that's really my only qualm was uh, that wire being connected, E and G being connected. And then over here, they are completely independent. So that was the main reason for the upgrade. All right, you guys. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it.